when you were there at Highgate Cemetery with the uh, psychic medium, in terms of your investigation, was, was it because uh, you thought that the Highgate vampire was the sensitive and that was what you wanted to communicate with? Or was that what the, the aim of the seance and the aim of Absolutely, yeah. Right. Quite a few people have already witnessed this entity themselves. I actually caught sight of it once before the sound took place. Inside I get sound. Okay, and, and did you know, so where you chose to go with the members, that was based on your sighting or on other sightings? Or? It was based on other sightings, but of course when I saw it myself, I, at the next meeting I said, look, I've actually seen something on the I said, it does want the investigation. What did it look like? The tall figure, I mean, the bottom of it seemed to just, or disappear into darkness, into blackness, you couldn't actually see, but it must have been nearly eight feet tall, I and mean, the gate was about eight feet tall, it's a bit short, and I'd say about seven feet tall. What struck me about it in particular is that I saw two distinct points of light, which I wasn't quite sure what was causing them, whether it was some houses in the background, which I took to be its eyes, I mean. It had never been reported as having hypnotic red eyes by other local witnesses, completely independent of each other. Right. So that's why we went, and really because I was quite convinced that something soon enough there was haunting the cemetery, and we were trying to get some evidence of it. And, and so then, moving forward to um, the nineteen eighty eight Highgate Cemetery, you ended up going to prison and getting a, a sentence, of, a very harsh sentence of four years, eight months. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about that case and how that came about? Because already, I suppose, you'd started, the police had you down as their kind of whipping boy from 1970 at that point. Yes? Well, the police weren't very happy with my But even less happy than a year later, I thought, well, I won't go near the house. There's another haunt that seems to be in Ghana. It's supposed to be the ghost of a 17th century pirate. I spoke to local people, and I went to the church there at night with a couple of people to try and conduct a similar thing. There were no vaults in it, there were no. Well, there were coffins under the ground. And the police again turned up, and they arrived. This is really true. They turned up, they came out of the darkness just as the church clock was striking midnight. Look at these black figures. No, excuse. Very Well, yeah. But not so great. Not so great. And left the question how exactly did the police turn up at that time? Anyway, that case went to court. And the magistrates. Took it very, very seriously. You got the impression their attitude was they were devout Christians, you could tell them. And their attitude was you shouldn't be in the graveyard on consecrated ground late at night with magical implements pointing at the and they're finally turned down. That's one of the money in this. So in 1973, there was another case uh, where I was arrested by the police. It was an old disused mansion in Crouchet, which is quite near Highbury. And it had already been blown out by fire some years earlier. But the staircase was still intact and the top floors were intact. Uh, but the ground, the lower floors, it was considerably dangerous because you could see all the, all the burnt floorboards on the floor. I was using that house with a couple of other people for two purposes ghost hunting was supposed to be a ghost in the ghost had seen in it. And we spent vigils there at night. And also I was conducting a series of sort of rituals trying to perfect certain I, I, I should mention I used to be involved in Wicca, which is nothing to do with black magical sectors. 
Well, they're shifting, yeah. And a lot of people don't. And the piece burst in, oh, a small fire on the floor. It's about something half high. The purposes of that fire was to light and to warm. It was very, very cold. It was in December 1973. And they came in and they arrested myself and another person. And the first words they said when they came through that door is, Good evening, Mr. Burns. Please turn back again. And they not only turned up again, they called the fire again. We had made this fire along with old fashioned district fingers. You know, it was very short and we put tin foil down because it was under control. They had apparently caught the fire brigade to sort of boost to their case because I was charged with, and we were charged with arson. No regard in the fire matter, but I don't know anything in the house because we've been burnt down by fire fire one. Anyway, I thought that case at the old Bailey in 1973 that was a cookie. So bear in mind I've got my high bit sent to a picture. 1972, I rested ghost hunting in the barn at Church, I had £5 On top of that now, I've just been put with a disaster charge. So they really were out to throw the book at me. So that's the background. In 1974, they did that. They did that. It was a long time, it went on for about two weeks. But all the main ingredients of that fire, the main ingredient was a witness statement that spoke the news and said I'd made in court. They swore on oath that I'd made these statements. None of them were signed. None of them. I can't go with the statements, but they're all basically to the fist. Of, I was perfectly said to them we were conducted new quarters in the country. Or he uh, really said missing something. I'm actually opposed to statements and I've always condemned it. I think it's a very dangerous practice. But for reason I won't go into that now. And the whole trial was poured up with things like that. Confessions I was about to make admissions, and as you pointed out at the beginning, the rule was different then. You couldn't even force the police to get you a solicitor to be present. I tried to when I was first arrested, and they lied in court and said they'd been trying to phone me, but of course they hadn't even tried. The first thing my solicitor knew about my arrest was when it appeared in the, in, in the Times newspaper. And they take me to court because they charged me with five offences. And I could send A very serious one was the case of the body in the car. Skeleton in the car. It was a hundred and fifty. Was that headless? It was headless. The police found, or they'd been caught with the cemetery by a doctor, who found this headless skeleton in his car. And they charged him with it. There was no evidence, apart from these verbal evidence, verbal admissions. I'm supposed to confess to the police, I said, look, you wouldn't understand Taking the body is the black magic. No. Taking the body was the purpose of the black magic. Putting it in the car was not intended, but somebody came along. Sounds very insane. I totally denied making that statement. And I totally denied many more of these statements that the police attributed to myself. 
is for the safety. It didn't help me in court, but I was free to know and I'm even on the night as well. Absolutely, totally a few things. Wow, it looks like the weather is also cooling up. <laughs> I shouldn't be talking about black magic. <laughs> All this is based on the background of stories of vampires and new daughters, new daughters, black magic, and all the rest of it. I have been approached at that time, by an American TV company, or rather they had an agent in London with both And they were trying to get me to introduce them to Satanists. I said, look, I don't know any Satanists. We've been trying to investigate them. And what happened in the end was, they wanted photographs of a new satanic ritual or a new witchcraft ritual. I forgot to just where I made the mistake was when I went back to the corner of my mausoleum. I took a photograph of a young lady who was kneeling beside the satanic marker. Now ironically, I didn't make them. Why did you take the photograph? Why did you take the photograph? I just thought it takes me to give it. It was an American TV production company who wanted to film the whole thing. That's why I took it. But bear in mind I was a lot, lot younger. I wouldn't do that now. But that's why I made the mistake. 